No, Dustin Poirier looked incredible. We were just talking about it. And Pete, I'm going to pull back that clip. Pete was right. I was wrong. Pete, last but not least. I mean, I think um, McGregor's more favorite. His favorite. So if yeah, I was like betting in the yeah. odds, I would put The smart man. Yeah. All right. So he puts money on Poirier at three. Yeah, DP looked incredible, man. Huh? Fucking. You know what I love, too? That right, that right hook he caught. It looks like uh, McGregor kind of fell into it. Mm, he took it right on the beat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Dustin Poirier's good, man. Steven Strangles, people, YouTube, Patreon supporters, I appreciate everybody. Incredible, incredible fight that we had this past Saturday. I was wrong. Pete was right. Mike Boyle was right. Mike Boyle is back turning on us, but look, give him a thumbs up real quick, man. Mike was Diamond. right. Diamond. Diamond. Connor will be back, though. Incredible fight, incredible fight. What can we say? Dustin Poirier, much deserved. Congratulations. Uh, today, we're going to work a little something, something. If you like the content that you're about to see, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. It uh, really helps us grow. Leave a like. It's a free way to support me. If you want to spend a little money, go on the Patreon. All right, so I'm going to have my man Pete working from Reverse Della Hiva. We haven't done stuff like this in a while. So when I feel like my, my opponent is starting to press me with his lead leg from a staggered stance, and he starts pushing into me, I'm going to go right to Reverse Della Hiva, and I'm going to grab right around his, his Achilles tendon like this. With my left foot, I'm going to keep a proximity control with my left leg. This allows me to create space which is good for MMA, right? I can all balance him, I can land shots, I can dictate space with my legs. But as he's pressing into me, what I'm gonna do, a lot of times a guy will peel your foot off, right? That's what the peel your foot off, this is a common reaction. What I'm gonna do is I'm either gonna put my foot on the floor or I'm gonna use foot behind foot. So you get a hydraulic effect that drives Pete's hands to the mat above my shoulders. So as I kick, his weight, his leg becomes de-weighted. Notice his foot is now off the ground. And I'm gonna utilize this opportunity to swivel my hips out, scissor my legs, and with my outside arm, I'm gonna grab around his knee. So watch my legs and my, arm, my left arm. So as I let go, I scissor, and I immediately get to my elbow, and I face in the same direction as Pete. So what's crucial is that we always grab above the knee line and never at the ankle. Obviously, the guy can easily pull his leg out, so I grab right above the knee line, and I start to come up to my left knee with my shoulder positioned behind his hamstring. With my right hand, I'm gonna grab the ankle, and I immediately shelf and I create pressure with my lat. So now, once again, Pete, if you're gonna pull your leg out, it becomes really difficult. From here, my right hand's gonna come around and secure it. It's a trade-off from left hand to right hand, and then he has two options. Either he capitulates to his right, left hip, which is common, because I'm pressuring him, he capitulates that side, or the guy's stubborn, he just continues to try to move away from me. I stand up, and I always attack the far side. This is the leg, in this case, his left leg that's gonna shorten and hop forward. So I wanna get ahead of the game by stepping around that left leg. So as I stand up, watch my left leg. I step my knee in front of his knee, and then I go to my tight waist, I walk him down, and we're ready to start attacking from this modified turtle position. So we're taking a, we're taking the reverse de la Hiva, which is obviously is a traditional jiu-jitsu position, and making it work for perhaps an MMA. But this will work in any jiu-jitsu context or MMA context. You just gotta be aware of getting smashed in your face. So once again, I grab that foot as he starts to split my legs. He peels my foot off. This time I'll place my foot on the floor, just for aesthetics. But the idea is to kick off the floor, bridge my hips up as I extend my right leg. The whole thing is to get Pete's hands on the mat. If Pete's hands aren't on the mat, he's gonna be able to pressure my hook and eventually change the angle and, and pass my guard, yeah? Which I don't want, obviously. So, one more time. As he starts to peel your foot off, I want you to immediately either go foot to foot or foot on the floor. Get his hands above your shoulders. Now watch how I scissor my hips away. I get up to my elbow, I shove. It's a switch off. I can even drive him flat to his belly. He'll capitulate to one hip. Jiu Jitsu guys will do that. Or I'll get hip and head height. I'll step around his hips, block his far side. And then from here, I can start to break Pete down to a hip and work my game like we always do. Make sure you guys check out the Patreon link once again. Tiger! The link is pinned in the first comment, but let's go over this again. Let me give you a few things to be weary of. This is what most people might do wrong. As he pressures me, I put my foot in place. As he peels, I get his hands going on the mat above me. Now, if you let go of this leg too soon and you don't start angling your hips, what happens is he just, he just cuts and passes. Go pass your leg straight away. Make sure that when you're here, there's an even trade-off. There's a scissoring and I'm trapping. See this? So now even if you were to run away, even if, even if I'm not in an athletic position, meaning I'm not on my elbow, I'm not in the most mobile of positions, I'm still in a position where I can start to 
attack my training partner at the hip, force him to roll over, etc. It's the main and one things we can do to force force the attack. So one more time. He steps through, splits my hips. I get myself in a modified reverse reverse del heva. He peels, get his hands going well above your chest. We start the scissoring action, always grabbing above the knee. If he pulls away and he's athletic, I always get above him and I make sure to go to the far hip because that's the leg that's gonna be a striding leg. And from here, we walk around, depending on his resistance level and size, we break him down and we work our attacks from turtle. I think it's worth doing one last time. So reverse the heave as the guy starts to press me with his right leg in the middle. We grab around the Achilles, we create a hydraulic effect with the intention of Kazushi. As he starts to go forward, we scissor, we get up to an athletic post, and as we build, we always shelf the leg. Remember, it's slippery, he's gonna, he's gonna be looking to pull that leg out and get away from me. So from here, I straddle the leg, and I go above the knee line on both legs. Now, once again, if he's a strong athletic guy with slippery legs, he's gonna pull right out. So as he's moving, I get head height, I get hip height, and I always track the far hip. That's his striding leg, right? His left leg. From here, we can walk around towards his upper left plank, break him down to a hip, and the choice is yours in terms of what you want to do there. Take the back if you'd like. Pin his ass to the mat, step over his legs, and work your game. It depends. Is it MMA, is it jiu-jitsu? What's your intention from the top position? Pete, thank you, my brother. Make sure you guys subscribe, leave a like, check out the Patreon link once again. It's uh, tagged or pinned rather in the top comment. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for the support.